Then on September 17th and 18th, we have our ladies retreat, and that is also at Higher Ground Campgrounds. And we have today and next Sunday to sign up for that and to pay for that. And Kaylin Vogelman is our speaker, and um, our key verse for that retreat is Luke 145. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. It's going to be such a wonderful retreat, and I cannot wait for it. Now it's time for our special dedication for our miracle baby in this church. We are so excited, and we can't wait for it. Well, good morning, church. It is good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Are you guys glad to be here? <laughs> that was kind of late in coming, but you, you got the hang of it. I want to share with you this beautiful scene that you're seeing up here. Can you guys step forward a little bit? You don't have to be scared of them. Come on. Scoot forward just a little bit. What you see up here is just a wonderful thing that we get to celebrate as a church family. We're going to do a baby dedication this morning. This is a great thing. We've got mom and dad, which is Amber and Steve Blake. Can you guys wave? There we go. We've got the extended family. We've got the, the mom and dad here. Gram grandparents. That's the, who they are. The grandparents are here. And the star of the show, if you can't see her from where you're at, we've got a picture on the screen. This is Eliana Joy Blake. Can you guys welcome Eliana Joy Blake today? <laughs> Dedicating a child is something that's very special for a family. They've set aside this Sunday. They've all tried to be here, obviously. It's a very special thing. But it's also special for us as a church. Because we as a church get to be a part of this today. And you'll see how that will kind of work. But we're excited. Matthew 19, verses 13 through 14, it says, The people brought the little children to Jesus for Him to place His hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. And Jesus said, Let the little children come to Me. And do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. This really is a privilege today. It's really special because Pastor Amber is right now a district licensed minister in the Church of the Nazarene. And so Pastor Amber will be dedicating Eliana herself. That's really special. And just so you know, Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock in Beaver Creek, Ohio, Pastor Amber will become an ordained elder in the Church of the Nazarene. It's very exciting, yeah. But Eliana is going to be dedicated today by her, her mom pastor, her pastor mom. So I ask you, the congregation, and here in a moment I'll have you respond, but I ask you, the congregation, will you commit yourself as the body of Christ to support and encourage Steve and Amber as they strive to fulfill their parental responsibilities to this child? And will you assist in the process by nurturing Eliana's growth towards spiritual maturity? If so... Everyone together, say, I will. I will. Amen. Hey, you've just had a lot of people volunteer to babysit. <laughs> just letting you know. Hey, you guys yell at me if I back up too far, okay? <laughs> now, Stephen Amber, in presenting this child for dedication, you signify not only your faith in Christ but also your desire to see Eliana follow after God from an early age. Eliana's primary spiritual guidance will come from you, her parents, to teach her early the fear of the Lord. And as I say these moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, let this be a reminder for you as, as well. To teach her early the fear of the Lord. To watch over her education so that she is not led astray to direct her youthful mind to the Holy Scriptures and her feet to the sanctuary, to protect her from evil influences and habits, and as much as you possibly can to bring her up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Will you strive to do this with the help of God? If so, answer, I will. Awesome. So we have a few gifts to give today, and I want to walk through those, and Stephanie's going to 
give those. The first is a red rose, and this symbolizes strength. Um, May God give you both the strength to give godly leadership in the home, to bring up Eliana according to the principles found in the Word of God. May God give you strength to do so. The white rose symbolizes purity and innocence and new beginnings. And so may God help you to watch over Eliana's upbringing, protect her from evil influences, and guide her every step toward purity of heart and mind. Amen? And the pink rose reminds us that Eliana is a wonderful combination of mom and dad. That by the grace of God, as you follow Christ to the best of your ability, our hope is that Eliana will do the same. And I looked up the pink rose. It also, it's a symbol of joy, which is the middle name, Eliana Joy. And the one more gift, the Bible is our gift to you. It contains the words of life the good news of the gospel, the story of our salvation in Jesus Christ. May it always guide everything we do as parents, and may it guide Eliana's life. Now at this point, we're going to hear from Steve. He's going to read a scripture, and then we get to hear from Pastor Amber as well. Okay. Okay. Um, The scripture I'm going to read today is from 1 Samuel, it's verses 27 and 28. It's uh, the story of Hannah, but I want to change some of the pronouns to reflect our story. We prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted us what we asked of him. So now we give her to the Lord. She will be given over to the Lord, and we worship the Lord there. Awesome. So he was a church baby. When I was in the hospital, I told the nurse about Eliana's story and how the church prayed for her. And um, the nurse said, this is a new baby. This is the church baby. <laughs> um, We chose Eliana's name because it means my God has answered. Um, We were not sure when we would be able to have a baby dedication. Um, There was a slim chance of being able to have a baby on our own. And after almost three years of struggling with infertility, God did a miracle and gave us baby Eliana. So that is why we chose her name, My God Has Answered. And it is my privilege to be able to dedicate her this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you that you will be with Eliana, that she will grow up serving and loving you and others. We do here now dedicate Eliana Joy Blake in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to dedicate Eliana. We thank you so much for the faith and the prayers of the family, Lord. And we just ask that your spirit would be close and be present in their lives and that you would guide them every step of the way. We all know that parenthood is difficult, Lord, and we need your help and we're so thankful for your church. And I pray, God, that we will do our best to influence Eliana for the glory of you. It's in your name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Can you congratulate the family today? Thank you so much. You stand with us. The church is the ultimate choir. Those of you who believe that, can I hear an amen? Amen. We like to sing here at the church, and we love up here to hear you sing. And so we're excited to 
celebrate all that God has done today. Here in a little bit, we're going to have baptisms. Later on, we're going to have testimonies. This is a great day to be in church. We're really glad that you're here. But this is our chance to sing together. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. And age to age he stands. In his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God! Sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. He's the name above all names. He's the name above all names, worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing. How great is our God. Sing that again. He's the name above all names. He's the name above all names. He is worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. How great. How great, how great is our God. Just our voices, sing it out. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. Oh 
think we should sing that one more time, just our voices. Can you do that? Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Isn't it good this morning just to hear the voice of God's people? This church is a singing church. And this morning I think that we got just a little taste of what heaven's going to be like with all of God's people giving glory where glory is due. Let's pray this morning. God, this morning we just stand in awe of the work that you do. Lord, we are so thankful for little Eliana and the joy that she brings not only to her family, but to her church. And God, may we just help surround her with that great cloud of witnesses and would she just grow in you God and I pray that you just give us the privilege to be able to see that and this morning we thank you for the work that you've done in the lives of the teenagers that went to camp this week God we can't wait to see what else you do in their lives and Lord we pray for a family member of someone who attends here her name is Sharon and you know, you already know what's going on in that situation. And we just pray that your hand would be on her and that your will would be done and that you would create a testimony in her that something only God can do. And Lord, we pray this week thanking you for Pastor Amber and her ordination on Tuesday. God, you have worked in her life. She has has been a conduit of your presence to the people around her, God, to the people that know her and even people that don't. We thank you that your presence exudes from her everywhere she goes. And Lord, this week we want to give you glory that she's being ordained as an elder in the church of the Nazarene. And we just pray blessings and blessings and blessings and blessings on her and on her ministry and on her family and God, on her little girl. We pray that she would be the shining example of your love in Eliana's life. And God, we thank you for the baptisms that are happening this morning. God, you are doing so much in your kingdom today and this week, God. We just pray expecting an avalanche of your presence this week. May you move, may you bless us, may you cause us to move. God, set your church on fire this week. God, bless these baptisms that are happening and the inward grace that you've done in their hearts. But we pray, God, for the outward grace, the outward expression, their confession that you are Lord. God, may you continue just not to let this baptism go today, but God, may you set them on fire anew each day. God, continue to bless them and continue to do your kingdom work. And God, I just pray that we would be a participant in that and that you would bless us as we do your work and we love on your people and as we be your hands and feet in our community and in our world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys can be seated as we move on to our baptisms. This morning, we are going to begin with Nia Bowling, and Pastor Kyle is going to be baptizing her, and her youth pastor, Kenny McQuitty, is going to be reading her testimony this morning. All right. Nia's favorite Bible verse is Joshua 1.9. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now he says, before Christ, I don't think I always made the best decisions. 
I started believing in God when I was younger and my grandma took me to church. Sometimes I still don't make the best decisions, but I try a lot harder and I live the way Jesus would want me to. I think God has brought me here and I've been able to meet a lot of people who have had a really positive impact on my life. Naya gets to be the first today. Aren't you excited about that? Yeah. Hey, could Naya's family, I feel like you need to stand up back there. You wanna stand up? There you go. We want you to be able to see this. Now, Naya, I want you to look out here. Just give them a look. It's okay. I mean, a nice look. This is your church family. Can the church family say hello to Naya? Hi. Folks, we're so excited about this. And Naya's testimony speaks of itself. But when I baptize her, just like the rest, when she comes up, I hope that she will hear not only her family, but her church family celebrating with her. Can we do that? And Naya, here in a moment, I'm going to ask you a couple questions, and I want you to answer me loud and clear, okay? Naya, have you asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins? Yes. And do you want to live your life for Christ the rest of your life? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> that is so great. Go ahead and get ready. Naya Bowling, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, in the Holy Spirit. Our next baptism this morning is Sydney Scott. And Pastor Kenny is going to baptize Sydney. And her dad, Mitchell Scott, is going to read her testimony. Sydney's favorite Bible verses. For there's not a man just, not just a man on earth who does good. I just spent a week with Sydney at teen camp, and she is an amazing person, and I encourage you, she'll be leaving to Trebekah in August, but if you have the chance to get to know Sydney, she has a wonderful heart, and I know she's going to do some incredible things for God. So, Sydney, I have a couple of questions for you. Have you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins? Yes. And do you commit to follow him um, all the days of your life? Yes. All right. You ready? All right. Sydney J. Scott, I now baptize you in the name of the Father. Our next baptism is Pamela Pauline Peltz, and Pastor Kyle is going to baptize her, and reading her testimony is her good friend, Robin Watson.
We're so excited today to have Pam with us. This is Pam's public profession of her faith. You're going public. You want everybody to know. We're excited for that today. So Pam, have you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins and to live within your heart? Yes. Awesome. And do you want to live the rest of your life totally surrendered to him? I do. Very good. Pam Peltz, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our next baptism is Jasmine Dyer. And Pastor Kyle is going to baptize Jasmine. And reading her testimony is her good friend, Yvonne Darty. So I apologize up front um, a little bit about Jasmine. Uh, a few years ago, she was in a serious car accident, and she's lucky to be with us today. And one day, you know, we've been needing help at the pantry, and one day she just came through the door and said, may I help? And we said, sure. So we sat with her that day, and she talked about us, what was going on in her mind and in her heart. And she needed us. Jasmine, we're glad that you're here. Thank you. And God has a plan for your life, and this is your church family. Go ahead and look at them. They like to see who's getting baptized. We love you, and we're excited about what God is doing in your life. And so, Jasmine, have you asked Jesus to forgive you of all of your sins? Uh, yes. And do you want to totally commit your life to him for the rest of your life? Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. I love it. Go ahead and get ready. Put your arms across your chest. Jasmine Dyer, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yay! Yay. Okay. Congratulations. Our next baptism is Philip Mitchell McDonald. And Pastor Amber is going to baptize Philip. And reading his testimony is his school teacher, Miss Jenny Miller. Jesus in children's church, and I wanted Jesus in my life to help me not start arguments and do obey better. After Christ, Philip says Jesus is helping him to be better at listening and being kind, and he says, I feel like I have somebody who cares about me. Amen. I remember when you raised your hand, you went to ask Jesus into your heart. We are so proud of you, and we are so excited for you, Philip. Do you want to look at your church family? I'm going to ask you a couple questions, okay? 
have you asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins? Can you say it out loud? He shook his head. Can you say yes? Yes! <laughs> Are you committed to following Jesus the rest of your life? Say it out loud again. Yes! He kept shaking his head. <laughs> okay, so put your hands like this. Philip McDonald, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our next baptism is Levi Brock, and Pastor Amber is going to baptize Levi. And reading his testimony is his mom, Rebecca. Have you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins? Yes. Will you follow him the rest of your life? Yes. Amen. If you gotta do your nose, you can. Levi Block, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. is Noah Brock and Pastor Kenny is going to baptize Noah and his mom Rebecca is going to read his testimony. I just got to spend a week with this young man and he is absolutely incredible too. People often on the trip, there were several times when people would see us with 23 teenagers and they're like, you're crazy. What are you doing here? And it's like, this is a vacation to me, seeing them chase after God the way they do. And he is certainly a prime example of that. So Noah, have you asked Jesus into your heart to forgive you for your sins? Yes. And do you choose to follow after him all the days of your life? Yes. All right, go ahead. Noah Brock, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and then the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And our final baptism this morning is Nathan Brock, and Pastor Kyle is going to baptize Nathan. And reading his testimony is his wife, Rebecca.
love hearing those testimonies. And if you haven't put it together yet, this is Dad. Those were his two sons before. That's his wife. That's Mom, Rebecca, and wife, Rebecca. And I'm standing on my tippy toes. <laughs> Nathan, have you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins? I have. And do you commit to surrender the rest of your life to him? I do. Awesome. Go ahead and get ready. Okay. Nathan Brock, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congrats, man. <laughs> God, one more hand for what he's done this morning. Amen. What an emotional service, right? Our God is so good, and he is our living hope. There's a new song that I want to teach you, just the chorus today. And in Scripture, in 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Hebrews 11:1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Will you stand with me? This new song was written by Phil Wickham, and it talks about how he is our rescue. And without him, we are nothing. Without Jesus Christ, our Savior, we are nothing. And he gives us all the hope, doesn't he? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Sing that with us. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. One more time. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. I will praise him. I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away each stain. Sing that one more time. I will praise him. I will praise him. I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away each stain. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this awesome morning, Lord. You are our living hope, and we are so thankful for that. 
Without you, we are nothing. And God, I just thank you for all these baptisms and for this dedication for our dear Eliana Joy, Lord. We are so blessed and we are so thankful today. We have such thankful hearts. Thank you so much for our church and for our church family. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Could you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this neighborhood, a neighborly day for a beauty hood. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like me. I've always wanted to live in this neighborhood with you. So let's make it Almost there. <laughs> okay, I didn't plan that. Okay, I kind of planned that. Well, I almost feel like we could conclude. I almost feel like we could conclude and go home, but I want to share some scripture with you today. Is, is that okay? Okay, that's why you came, really. All of this is great. But I want to hear from God's word today as well. So we're talking about this idea of being neighborly. And last week I gave an intro to that. But this week I want to continue because when we're neighborly, we choose to bless and serve those around us. And a lot of you would say, thumbs up, yes, I want to do that, but I don't know how. I don't have resources. I don't have stuff. How am I supposed to bless people? And so I want to give you five ways that you can actually bless people. And this week, we're just going to start with one. And it's very simple. It's something that you don't have to have talent or ability. It just comes simple to you. You can do this. Prayer. Begin with prayer. And as I talk today, I want you to be thinking about some people that you can be praying for. Now, in your bulletin, this is really important. In your bulletin, which I heard we gave every single bulletin out today, which has not happened since I've been here. So that's exciting. So good thing, in each bulletin I put two inserts, and you'll see 12 lines. And my goal is for every single one of us in here to take one of those and begin to write down some names of people that you want to serve and bless, and pray this week that God will give you an opportunity to serve and to bless them. So I want you to, to get those out. And if only one in your family got the, the insert, I want you to make sure that whoever's around you can get one. So is there someone who doesn't have an insert? This is the time. I want you to let people know, I don't have an insert. I want an insert. Raise your hand if you need an insert. And Pastor Kenny has some extra ones in case you didn't get one. We've got some in the back, Pastor Kenny, or if anybody's around him that might have an extra, pass it on back. We want everybody to do this. Here's why. If you don't have one, keep raising your hand. Here's why. We've got Brian over here. If 175 of us commit to praying for 12 people each this week, that we'll have a chance to be neighborly and to serve and to bless them. Somebody do the math. 12 people times 175. Andy? I know what it is, so I'm testing you here. Anybody? Get your phone out, folks. You got a calculator. It's 2,100. 2,100. Think about it. We have the chance 
to bring before the throne room of God 2,100 names this week. Isn't that cool? That's the vision I want you to catch on to today. And so as I'm preaching and talking about prayer, I want you to be thinking about the people in your life that you want to serve and you want to bless them. And a very easy way to bless people is by praying for them, mentioning their name in prayer. It is an exciting day, and I don't want to miss this opportunity as a church. So why do we do this? Because Jesus did this. That's why we do this. I want us to look at Luke chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. And they're on the screen, and I'll read through those. It says this, one of those days Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. It continues, when morning came, he called his 12 disciples to him. Sorry, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, which tells us that there were more than 12 who were following him at that time. And so he had a choice to make, a decision to make. He chose 12 of them whom he also designated as apostles. Then it gives their names. And if you have one of these names, you're just more spiritual than other people. We all know that. (laughs) Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, the son of James, that's a different Judas than the next one that I'm about to read, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. And so we've got Jesus who has been performing miracles. He's been going around the area teaching and preaching and he's gaining a following. He's obviously got dozens of followers at that point and he has a big decision to make. He's about to choose who he's going to invest the next three years of his life in. And so what does he do? He begins with prayer. He begins with prayer. The first thing I want to point out from this scripture today is just that. He began with prayer, and so should we. Prayer was a routine part of Jesus' life. He emphasized it throughout his ministry time and time again. He prioritized prayer. You never heard Jesus say, I just don't have time to pray. I just can't find time in my schedule to pray. You never heard Jesus say that. You know, you've heard of the reformer, Martin Luther. He famously said, I have so much to do today that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. (laughs) What an attitude about prayer. I've got so much to do. I can't afford not to spend time in prayer. Jesus prayed. Jesus believed that God heard his prayer. And Jesus believed that prayer matters. And so I ask you, do you? Do you? My guess is if you truly believed that when you prayed that the God of the universe heard you, you might prioritize it more. And I want to encourage you today. Jesus believed this, so should we. You know, there's always been someone or some group that attacks the validity of prayer. You're always going to have that. You always have. And, you know, these opposing groups, it really shouldn't surprise us. I wanted to give you an example of that. Two and a half years ago, the Atheist National Convention... They held their convention in Cincinnati on the weekend of Easter. How about that for timing? And they had a big event. I believe it was either Saturday or it might have actually been on Easter Day itself. But their promotional statement for this event was was this. Two hands working can do more than a thousand clasped in prayer. Two hands working can do more than a thousand clasped in prayer. Now, listen, these are atheists, so this should not surprise us, okay? We shouldn't be surprised by this. I'm just pointing this out. There will always be someone opposed to the meaningfulness and the impact of prayer. But folks, we as Christians believe the exact opposite of that. Now, let me be clear. I'll be the first to roll up my sleeves and get some work done. I like to do the work, okay? But I also believe that two hands clasped in prayer can do more than a thousand hands at work. Amen? Amen. We believe that this matters. We believe that this is important. But yet, we treat prayer as a last resort instead of our very first response. And I hope that that will change. If that's been a, a pattern in your life, I hope that that will change. There will always be opposition to prayer. But here's the cool thing. And we're about to hear some of these testimonies. Every opposition that comes against Christ and his church and how meaningful prayer is, guess what? 
we can overcome that by the power of our testimony. Can I get an amen? Come on. When we have a prayer that God has answered, when we've experienced God in our life, we know that this is important and we can overcome those opposing views with the millions of Christians out there in the world who have a testimony. And we're about to hear from some of those. I'd like for the teens to come forward. They went on a trip last week to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And God answered many prayers for that trip. And you know how sometimes you pray for a certain thing, but then God answers it in a totally different way? Yeah. Well, that's the way it happened quite a bit this week. And so I want you to hear from some of these teens. But folks, answered prayers. These baptism testimonies. Answers to prayer. Baby Eliana. Answer to prayer. Amen. Try to tell Amber and Steve prayer doesn't work. Amen. Go ahead. Try. I dare you. <laughs> Man, she'll get, she'll get angry with you. I'm telling you. <laughs> Folks, prayer matters. And I want you to hear some testimonies because that's how we overcome these opposing views. You can't argue with somebody's story. And so, Pastor Kenny, why don't you introduce this time and then these wonderful young ladies can share about the trip. Sure. So we left on Sunday last week, right after church. We had an amazing time this week. Um, we had such a good time. Oh, I didn't know that was going to make it anywhere. Um, so when with the teenagers, you act like a teenager. No, we had a wonderful week. Um, I don't know how many of you know, but God just truly answered prayer. Last week, I was a little scared. It was supposed to rain every day, so we started praying that it wouldn't, and we did not have one drop of rain the entire week that we were down there. So I really feel like that was an answered prayer. Transportation for this trip was a nightmare, literally. Um, I went Saturday before we were leaving to pick up one of our rental cars, and the rental company said, sorry, but we don't have any cars to give you. So we had seven seats that we couldn't fill. I mean, seven people with no seats to fill. Fortunately, my mother loaned me her minivan, and that replaced it and took care of that problem. So it was just another answered prayer. The red van, it was given to us for free. Um, and it ran like a champ the whole way down there. It doesn't look the greatest, but it runs just fine, and that's all that matters. Kenny, can I, can I pause you for yes. a minute? The red van, we prayed that God would provide the perfect vehicle for our trip. Come to us in May. 2020, great rims, leather seats, all that good stuff. Hello, 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 hello. We prayed for God to give us the perfect vehicle for our church. And I thought it was going to be something really nice, right? Because that's just what I thought. But we got this red van for free, and it's a 2001. And if you've looked at it, it looks a little rough. Yes. Okay? But God has blessed our church with the right people who gave of their time yes. to make that van run. And it ran safely down there and back. The whole way back. It was perfect. Amazing. So, yes. Even air conditioning. Even air conditioning, which we needed it for sure. Um, if you look at this picture right here on the screen, you know, ministry is not always easy, but it's moments like this that make you keep pushing forward because to have them joined in prayer. By the, we talked about transformation this week, and these ladies are going to talk about it, so I'm not going to. By the end of the week, though, on the last night, we had eight students commit to following Jesus and to be the transforming power in their life. So it was a well-spent week, and I think Becca's going to share with us now. Hi, guys. I'm Becca, and I'll be a junior at Bethel Tate. And I was really looking forward to camp this year because I didn't get to go to any last year. And um, I really enjoyed this time with the youth group and like being able to build relationships. Um, we talked about transforming and conforming. And like those are things that are obviously going to happen in your, in your life. You, you don't get that choice, but you do get the choice to decide who you spend yourself, like who you put yourself around, whether or not you're spending your time doing worldly things or with your church family. Um, another thing we talked about was the sticky stuff in your life. And you have to... Get rid of that before you can let Jesus fill the rest of your cup. If, so we had an example like you have like a little bit of syrup and you have to get rid of the syrup before you can fill your cup with more water. So to do that, we have to make sure we're filling our cup with Christ-like things and not worldly things around us. But I really enjoyed Caleb. So here's Sydney. Okay, hi everybody, my name is Sydney Scott. Um, I'm gonna be going to Trebekah in the fall, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I was really uh, excited to go to camp this year because I've only been coming here for a few months. I used to come here when I was little, but I don't really have many friends that I would really call Christ followers, and I've made a bunch of new friends here, and I'm so excited because they're wonderful people. So one of the lessons that we talked about was um, 
letting God come in when he knocks. Because he's going to knock, and some people are going to answer, and some are not. And he's not going to barge in. He's not going to come in, change your life. He's not going to do that. He's going to knock first, and he's going to come in if you let him. And that's one of the reasons that he gives us free will on earth. He's not going to just barge in. He's going to give you the choice to make. So thank you. Hi, I'm Katie Wishard, and I will be a freshman at Bethel Tate High School this year. And I want to talk about how we were able to build the bonds that we were and how we've gotten closer as more like family now. Mm -hmm. And we have been able to grow in the word of God. And I just want to talk about how one night when we were praying and we were all together and God was even celebrating because he even put on a song for us while we were praying one night. <laughs> That's all. Can I Thank talk you guys. Just one second? Yeah. You guys can go ahead. I can't remember the song, but literally we had just got done praying. The kids had <laughs> se September. September. Has anybody ever heard that song before? It goes, yeah, yeah. Like there's a part where it's like screaming yeses. <laughs> well, that part came on right as we finished praying about accepting Jesus into our life. So anyway, it's perfectly timed. Thank you, guys. God answers prayer. Jesus began with prayer. The second point is that Jesus took prayer seriously. Jesus went off during the daytime, began to pray, and then what does the scripture say? He prayed all night long. I mean, think about the commitment that that takes. Think about how we ask, like, we'd like for you to spend five minutes in prayer each day this week. And Jesus is like, I'm going to spend the rest of my day and all night in prayer because this is a big decision. He took it seriously because he knew that this was the 12 people he was going to be spending the next three years of his life with. That's serious. Also, these are the 12 people he's going to pass on the good news of the gospel to. This is a huge thing. And those 12 people are then going to pass that message on to their families, their friends, for generations and generations to come, all the way to us. These are the guys that wrote much of our New Testament, folks. This was a big decision not only for Jesus, but also for the men that he was going to choose. This decision was so big, it had eternal impact. Eternal impact, folks. This is a big thing. That's why Jesus took prayer seriously. And I think that we ought to take prayer seriously as well. The last thing I want you to see is that Jesus believed prayer prepared him for a big decision. Many times in the life of Christ, he would pray before a big moment or a big decision in his life. And I think that's a great practice for us. If you have a big decision coming up or a big moment, I hope that you will spend time in prayer because prayer will prepare you. Even if it's a short amount of prayer or if it's a lot, a lot, a lot of prayer for one tiny little moment. I got an example for you. You know the Olympics are coming up, right? The Olympics are coming up in Japan and I hope to be able to watch some of that. I love watching the Olympics. And there was a guy, it, it made me think as I was reading and saw this illustration, there was a guy in the 1984 Olympics, his name was Rowdy Gaines. He was a swimmer. He won 11 world records in swimming throughout his career. He qualified for the 1980 Olympics in Moscow, but the U.S. boycotted the Olympics that year. And so he wasn't able to go. But then in 1984, he won three gold medals. Anybody born in 1984? Kenny's born in 1984. Yeah, yeah, a few of you. The teenagers are excited that you were born. Good job. <laughs> He's way older than me. I was born in 1985. <laughs> he won three gold medals that year. So essentially, here's, here's the summary. He spent eight years preparing for that one Olympics. Eight years of training. He calculated how many miles he had swam in 50-meter increments, the length of the pole. He calculated it. He said approximately 20,000 miles that he had swam over the course of eight years in his training. Let me summarize this again. He was a sprinter in his swimming, so all three of his gold medals were won in very short periods of time. Here's what it looks like. He swam a distance that would equal swimming across the world, literally, for races that lasted only 49 seconds. All that preparation for 49 seconds. Prayer 
is like that. Sometimes it feels mundane. Sometimes it feels routine. But I'm telling you, it's not going to waste. The time that you spend practicing prayer and allowing prayer to prepare you for those big moments in life, it will be worth it. I'm telling you, prayer is the right way to prep and train. Jesus began with prayer. Jesus took prayer seriously. And Jesus believed that prayer prepared him. So Jesus went off that night to pray over a big decision. He was about to get a piece of paper out, I guess, and write down the 12 names of the people that he was going to invest the rest of his life in. And he believed it was so important that he spent the rest of the day and all night praying over it. He began with prayer. And you know, I think it would be cool if we did exactly what Jesus did. <laughs> and we make this a matter of prayer. And we take those sheets and we write down names of people that we want to be neighborly to. We want to serve them and bless them by praying for them. And folks, I'm telling you, if you ask God, if you write some names down there and you ask God, Lord, give me an opportunity to bless this person, he's going to do it. <laughs> he's going to do it. I'm just warning you now. Be ready for that. I just think it would be great if we could make this a matter of prayer and do this together as a church. And then we can, one of these days, talk about and celebrate all that God has done through those blessings. Amen? Amen. Would you bow your heads? Lord, I want to pray over this challenge. I want to pray over this activity, this, this way to bless others and be neighborly. And I ask that you would help each of us to feel the pressure of this challenge, to accept this challenge as something that you've called us to do. And Lord, I'm excited for this. I'm excited to hear the stories. I'm excited for not only what it will mean for the people that we're praying for, but I'm also excited for what it will mean for each person in here who's participating. And so, Lord, I ask that you would do a great work through our prayers and in those that we're praying for. God, we trust you, and we believe that you're going to do something great through all of this. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Folks, before you go, I want to let you know that um, Doc Lale passed away Saturday morning, and his visitation will be Wednesday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. here at the church, and his funeral will be Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Doc was 92, and would he have been 93 next month? Doc was awesome. So, <laughs> some of you knew Doc. Doc was awesome. And I loved talking to Doc, and every time I talked to him, he would tell me all about his rededication to Christ in the last decade of his life, and it's been the best decade of his life. And he would talk about salvation, and he would talk about how blessed he was of God and how he wanted to be a blessing. Folks, Doc had an incredible testimony, and he blessed others by sharing it. And I think it would be great if we as his church family would come out and support his family this Wednesday and Thursday. Will you accept the challenge? I hope that you do this week. I hope that we can go and bless others through our prayers. You guys are dismissed. Have a great week.